Hi, this is Julia Walter, the co-captain of 165 miles off Broadway, the, uh, the acting troupe of Marathon for a Better Life. We're very happy to um, uh, put on a little show for you because that's what we do. So Posey, you're up next. Hi everyone, thanks Julia. Um, as Julia said, we are really excited to be part of the Marathon virtual program this year of 2020. It shows our resilience and how we can adapt. And so with that said, I have a little poem here <clears throat> by Emily Dickinson, and it's called Hope. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches on the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb from me. And that's called Hope by Emily Dickinson. I hope you enjoyed that. So next, we are going to have Sean Jordan join us. And he's going to have some readings and words of inspiration. Hi, Sean. Hello, Zoom generation. Uh, so I was asked to participate in this year's Marathon for a Better Life fundraiser as a part of Team 165 Miles Off Broadway. And actually, before I begin, let me go ahead and set a timer here so that I make sure I can get everything in in three to five minutes. Uh, I think I have three to five minutes. Uh, hold on a second while I look that up here. Uh, oh, bear with me. I know I have an email about this somewhere. Okay, yes, there it is. A skit of some kind that is three to five minutes in length. Okay, let me get back to uh, setting that timer. Hmm. Uh, okay, I know my phone has a timer function. Oh, stopwatch, no, not that. Uh, alarm, no. Uh, uh, timer, there it is, okay. Let me just go ahead and set this right here for three to five minutes. Actually, wait, how long have I been on for already? Uh, am I on? Well, I think I'm on. Okay, let's say I've been on for two minutes, so that would leave about three minutes left. Of course, that's if I go for the full five minutes. I'm not sure if I, what I have to say will take the full five minutes. I, I didn't really time this beforehand uh, to see how long I needed. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what if it's too short? I don't want it to be too short because then it might not seem meaningful enough. I really shouldn't go less than three minutes. Oh, but what if it's too long? It might be worse if I go over the time limit. I want everyone to know I care, so I want to use as much time as possible for my special message. Oh, I guess there's no such thing as caring too much, as long as I can squeeze all of that caring into five minutes. Oh, I really should have timed all of this ahead of time. I've been stuck inside for three months, so I really don't have any viable excuses. I've had all the time in the world to prepare for this, but of course I've left it to the last minute again. But that's what I do, I procrastinate. Procrastination is second nature to me. Or is that second hand? Hmm, I think it's second nature, but I know it like the back of my hand. Anyway, I do it so often that I don't even realize I'm doing it. I usually like to get right to the point, which is what I should be doing right now. But there's just so much to do to make sure that everything is just right. Speaking of that, let me make sure my timer is set so that I can move on. Okay, there we have it, all set. Now, on to my special message. Now, <laughs> I found something really special. It is so special, in fact, that you might say it was designed specifically for this event. I'm not really sure if it was, though. Uh, wait a second, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, I'm getting a text. Uh, just, just give me a second to get rid of this so we can keep this thing going. I don't want to accidentally hang up on Zoom. Okay, there we have it. <clears throat> 
It's in this book here. <clears throat> Took me a while to find it. And it's just the most perfect thing. I'm sure you'll agree. It's creative and original and isn't really belonging to any one particular category. It can be taken many different ways. My hope is that it will provide inspiration and bring a smile to someone's face or perhaps a laugh that they may not have realized they still had. A momentary relaxation of the mind of all negative thoughts and stressful responsibility is what I hope this message brings. A moment to forget that there is anything wrong and to just remember that there's always something meaningful to be found in each moment. That would be a very nice reaction to this very special message. Okay, now, where was I? Excuse me just a second. Oh, let me see. Ah, yes. I still haven't found the darn thing. <laughs> wait, I don't have my glasses. Hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, I don't have any glasses. I've been procrastinating on that too. Well, anyway, this book here is a little bigger than I thought it was. Okay, a lot bigger. Let's find what we're looking for. <clears throat> Just bear with me while I scroll through the tome here. We're almost there. Excuse me. Just about. Maybe just a little bit further. Check my time. We're still good. Oh, I can't seem to get to it. Just one more page. I think I see it. Uh, mm. <clears throat> oh, there we go. And it is, I found it. Oh, I guess my time's up. I'll try to plan a little better next year. And thanks for inviting me and take care. That was awesome, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> I love your book, by the way. <clears throat> next up, friends, we have Julia Walter and Leslie Rig Wrigley doing a Nichols and May skit, um, Mother and the Rocket Scientist. So. Julia and Leslie, take it away. Hello, hello, are you there? Hello, Arlene, this is your mother. Do you remember me? Mom, I was just gonna call you. It's, isn't that a funny thing, you know, that I had my hand on the phone. Arlene, you were supposed to call me last Friday. Mother, I know I didn't have a second. I could cut my throat and I... Arlene, I sat by this phone all day Friday. I was working. And all day Friday night. I was in the lab. And all day Saturday. I, I... I and I, all day Sunday. Mom, I... And your father finally said to me, eat something, Phyllis, you'll faint. I said, no, Harry, no. I don't want my mouth full when my daughter calls. Mom. And you never called. Mom, I was sending up a rocket. I didn't have a second. Well, it's always something, isn't it? All right, Mom, look, please. You know, Arlene, I'm sure that all the other scientists there have mothers, and I'm sure they all find time after their breakfast or before their count off. Down, Mother. It's a countdown. To pick up the phone and call their mothers. Mom, listen, now that you have me on the phone, I want... And you know I worry. Well... That's the point. I read in the paper that you're still losing them. Mother, mother, I, I don't lose them. I nearly went out of my mind. Listen, mother, I said. I thought, what if they're taking the cost of that rocket out of her pay? All right, that's it, that's it. Tell me how you are. How are you? I'm sick. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Well, you know what it is, Arlene. Yeah? It's the same thing it's always been. Uh, yeah, um, of course, yeah, yeah. It's my nerves, and I went to the doctor. Yeah, sure. 
And he tells me, he says, listen, Mrs. White, you are a very nervous, very high-strung woman. Well, yeah, goodness knows that's true. And you cannot stand the slightest aggravation. Well, no, of course not. So I said, doctor, I know that. You know that I do know that. But I said, doctor, you see, I have this daughter, and she's very busy. She's very, very busy. You see, doctor, she's too busy to pick up a phone and call her mother. Mom, please, I want you to tell me. And then when I said that to him, that man turned pale. Mother! Mrs. White. I have been a doctor for 35 years, and I have never heard of a daughter too busy to call her mother. I know, Mom. And w that's what he said to me, Arlene, and that man is a doctor. Mother, please, tell me what the doctor said. Is he going to do with you? What's he going to do with you? Well, I, I may be in the hospital for a while. The hospital? What? What are they going to do? Well, they're going to x-ray my nerves. Mother, why didn't you let me know these things? All you have to do is... Never mind about me. Listen, <clears throat> tell me how you... Is, how's your hangnail? Mother, please, listen to me, please. Just don't worry. Arlene, what does that mean? What does that mean? Nothing, actually. I just said the first thing that came into my head. Listen to me, Arlene. I'm a mother. Yeah, well, that's the thing, and I... You're very young, and someday, someday, you'll get married. Mom. And you'll have children of your own. Mom. And honey, when you do, I can only pray that they make you suffer the way you make me suffer. Okay, well, uh, thanks for calling, Mom. Well, you're very sarcastic, Arlene. Mother, I'm doing my best, Mom. You called. I'm trying my best to explain that I've been busy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I bothered you when you are so busy. Believe me, I won't be around to bother you much longer. And listen, I, I hope I didn't make you feel bad. Uh, are you kidding? Of course I feel awful. Oh, honey, if I could believe that, I'd be the happiest woman in the world. Mother, believe me, I feel rotten. Well, that's all a mother could ask for, Arlene. All right, goodbye, Arlene. I'll talk to you later. And, and mother loves you, even if your rockets don't make it. Mom! Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much. That was an awesome performance. Um, next up, we have Julia. She has a couple of poems and maybe a reading for us. And um, after that, we'll have Leslie up with some really awesome jokes. So take it away, Julia. This is from A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. It is Twistable Turnable Man. He's the twistable, turnable, squeezable, pullable, stretchable, foldable man. He can crawl in your pocket or fit in your locket or screw himself in a 20 volt socket or stretch himself up to a steeple or taller or squeeze himself into a thimble or smaller. Yes, he can. Of course he can. He's the twistable, turnable, squeezable, pullable, stretchable, shrinkable man. And he lives a passable life with his squeezable, lovable, kissable, huggable, pullable, tuggable wife. And they have two twistable kids and bend up the way that they did. And they turn and they stretch, but as much as they can for this bendable, foldable, do what you're toldable, easily moldable, buy what you're soldable, washable, mendable, highly dependable, buyable, saleable, always available, bounceable, shakeable, almost unbreakable, twistable, turnable man. And we've got another poem. It is called Dirge Without Music. It is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. I am not resigned to the shutting away of loving hearts in the hard ground. So it is, so it will be, for so it has been, time out of mind. Into the darkness they go, 
the wise and the lovely, crowned with lilies and the laurel they go, but I am not resigned. Lovers and thinkers into the earth with you, be one with the dull, the indiscriminate dust, a fragment of what you felt, of what you knew, a formula, a phrase remains, but the best is lost. The answers quick and keen, the honest look, the laughter, the love, they are gone. They are gone to feed the roses, elegant and curled is the blossom, fragrant is the blossom, I know, but I do not approve. More precious was the light in your eyes than all the roses in the world. Down, down, down into the darkness of the grave, gently they go. The beautiful, the tender, the kind, quietly they go. The intelligent, the witty, the brave, I know, but I do not approve, and I am not resigned. Thank you, Julia. I think up next we have Leslie with some jokes for us, and... There she is. There okay. I am. We love a good ham bone, and nobody liked a joke better than Sherry Stevens. Yep. So do us solid there, Leslie. Thank okay, you. Okay, so I have, a, I have a baker's half dozen of jokes here, um, and they are supremely corny, so um, feel free to laugh, groan, or whatever applies. Um, so a grasshopper sits down in a bar and the bartender says hey do you know we have a drink named after you and the grasshopper ponders this for a second and says you named a drink michael <laughs> <laughs> what did the zero say to the eight really nice belt <laughs> How come the tomato was red? He saw the salad dressing. <laughs> Did you hear the Lego store has reopened? People are lined up for blocks. <laughs> what did the duck say when it bought the lipstick? Put it on my bill. <laughs> what happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed away. <laughs> and for the last one, why was the broom late? Because it overswept. Uh, 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 I cracked uh, myself up. That was awesome. <laughs> Those were really actually pretty good. I like the grasshopper in the bar. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can't remember a joke to save my life. So thank you, Leslie. Last but not least, we have Alicia Nichols. She's going to read us a story about monsters, and I think it's a pretty good one. It's one of my favorites. So, Alicia, pop on here and give us your rendition. Here she goes. The monster at the end of this book. What did that say? On the first page, what did that say? Did that say there will be a that say there will be a monster at the end of this book? It did? Oh I am so scared of monsters! Oh, no. Shh it, listen, I have an idea. If you do the eternity pages, we will never get to the end of this book. And that is good because there 
is a monster at the end of this book. So please do not turn the page. Do you think no one can see what you're reading? So you could. <gasps> you turn the page! Maybe you do not understand. You see, turning pages will um, bring us to the end of this book and there is a monster at the end of this book, but this will stop you from turning pages, see? I am trying the pages, I am tying the pages together so you cannot. You turn another page! You do not know what you are doing to me. Now stop turning pages! There! I Grover am nailing this page to the next one so that you will not be able to turn it. We and and we will not get to the uh, not get any closer to the monster at the end of this book. All right, all right, all right. Do you know that every time you turn another page, you not only get us closer to the monster at the end of this book, but you make a terrible mess. This will stop you from turning pages. A heavy, thick, solid, strong brick wall. I would just like to see you Turn, try to turn this page. You're strong. Do you know that you are very strong? This, the next page is the end of this book and there is a monster at the end of this book. Oh, I am so scared. Please do not turn the page. Please, please, please. Well, well, look at that. This is the end of this book. And this is the end of the book. And the only one here is me. I love all further grower have full have have the and the monster at the end of this book. And you are so scared. I told you and I told you there was nothing to be afraid of the end. Oh, I am so embarrassed. That was awesome. Thank you, Alicia. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite stories. So we're going to get everybody up here again. I don't know if, if we still have Sean. Yep, there's Sean. We have Sean. Okay. So before we do our song, I think we should all just um, encourage everybody to donate to the marathon, whether it is in our name or somebody else's name. Tune into the Zoom to see what other activities are going on, knowing that just because we're in a pandemic and most people are staying home, it doesn't mean that cancer treatment stops and uh, our, our loved ones and all our friends and family that are fighting this battle need help more than ever. So thank you. All right, Leslie, lead us off. Okay, this is one of my favorite songs um, <laughs> because I always loved um, um, Lamb Chop and this was a song from that show. Um, and it goes like this. This is the song that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that doesn't end. 
Yes, somebody we take it. On and on, my friends. Some people started singing, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever just because it's. This is love. the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever just because. This is the song that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever just because. This is... It the oh. song and that never ends. <laughs> and it just goes on and on, my friend. <laughs> people started singing that. No, now we try to get that it. out of your ear. <laughs> yeah, we just we just left everybody with an earworm, and yep. it's kind of like the marathon because the need goes on and on. Oh, so yay! Yay! yay.